let's talk about the symbology because that's okay. really what this book is about is it not the the six pointed star uh that's the beginning of the book and then of course it stretches out from there but but i think that is very interesting uh, now the bible actually talks about the the star and it's most interesting and we're talking about the star of david here this, this, well, it's, David never had that star, of course. Uh, he said his shield is God. His only shield was God. That was what David says in the Old Testament. So where did they get the star from? Uh, and, of course, you, you discover that the star actually is talked about first in the book of Amos in the Old Testament. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Kion, your images the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. And that's when the, the Hebrews, they were called Hebrews at that time, of the people of Israel, betrayed God and went, as the Bible says, whoring after the old gods of Egypt and Babylon. They, they left the true God then and began to worship and Amos says one of the gods they worship was Moloch, mm -hmm. the great god of fire. And his sign was the star. So the, the prophet Amos in the Old Testament says, and you worship the star of your god, Moloch. Wow. <laughs> Moloch was this beast god. And the Hebrews have said you actually, uh, the prophet Amos correctly accused the Jews or the Hebrews at that time, he said, you even sacrificed your children to him by putting them in the fire, burning them to death. Now, the interesting thing is in the New Testament, in the book of Acts 6 and 7, the first Christian martyr Stephen also said the same thing about to the Jews. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. You know, they challenged Stephen and said, Why are you preaching this Jesus? How dare you? And explain yourself. A, a great mob came up against Stephen in the streets there in Jerusalem. And Stephen preached a sermon to them in response. And he said, God rescued you out of Egypt and Babylon. But what did you do? You returned to the worship of the star, God. Wow. And isn't it amazing that, that 2,000 years later, 1948, they re refound, you might say, uh, a nation called Israel, that they call Israel. Although the Balfour Declaration was given to Lord Rothschild in 1917, it would not be until 1947 that the plan for a Jewish state would be implemented. It would take the horrors of World War II to get public opinion behind creating a Jewish state in the land of Palestine. In 1947, the United Nations declared that there would be two states in Palestine. There would be a Jewish state and a Palestinian state. The United States delegation supports the basic principles of the unanimous recommendations by the United Nations, which provides for partition and immigration. Later, Russia supported the United States on the partition recommendation, while Arab states threatened reprisals, as the Holy Land's future hangs in the balance. But Israel became the first state, and they've never allowed Palestine to become a state. So they've made sure that the the United Nations provision has never been put into effect. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the Zionist organization, declared the establishment of the Jewish state in the land of Israel. In May of 1948, a new Jewish state, Israel, was born in a bath of blood. Jewish troops routed Arab forces from the city of Haifa in the first of a series of battles that were to reverberate through the years. The new government, headed by David Ben-Gurion, is installed in Tel Aviv. Thus, for the first time since the Roman legion destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70 AD, the Jewish people have a nation of their own. 
today a lot of Christians think that like God brought the nation of Israel back, you know, and, and God did this wonderful work. But really, was it really the will of God to bring these people back into Israel or was it the will of the United Nations? The Bible tells us very clearly in Hebrews chapter 4 that when they first came to the promised land with Moses, they could not enter in because of unbelief. Then 40 years later, their children who believed the Lord were allowed to enter the promised land. Then later, they worshiped other gods, and what did God do? He removed them from the promised land. They went to Babylon for 70 years. Then after they repented and turned away from their false gods, they were brought back to the promised land. Then when they rejected Jesus Christ, they were removed from the promised land again. And then in 1947, they all believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and God brought them back to the promised land. Is that what happened? No. Did they believe in Christ? I mean, look, uh, Christian out there, ask yourself that question. Was there a revival going on in Israel? Were people accepting Jesus as their Messiah? The answer is no. So therefore, that was not God bringing back Israel because they believed in him. He said he would scatter them if they didn't keep his word, and he did. He said he'd bring them back when they turned unto him. They have not turned unto him. And so if it's not the Lord who brought them back, then who did bring them back? It was the spirit of Antichrist that brought them back to the promised land. It was the United Nations who brought them back to the promised land. Thus history was made as the Jewish state of Israel was born. Conceived in strife and weaned on violence, Israel has flourished to become a constructive voice in world affairs. Her flag became a symbol of hope in a troubled world. And for their ensign, for their great symbol on their flag, the Jews placed the star. That's the, of the god Moloch, the fire god, which, whose name was Baal, or, or really Satan. They worship Satan. Jews, and, and the excuse me, let's just ask the question point blank. Yeah. Do Jews worship Lucifer? Yeah, I, I actually quote a very high-level uh, Jewish official. Uh, he was the chief legislative assistant to the Jewish U.S. Senator uh, Jacob Javits. I believe his name is Rosenthal uh, in my book. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, our God is Lucifer. Our God is Lucifer. When you really study the Jewish Kabbalah, which is another uh, set of uh, books, the primary one of which is called the Zohar, uh, you find that they actually worship a, a multiplicity of gods. Most people believe the Jews only worship the God of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but that's not true. They have what they call the Tree of Life in the Jewish religion. And the rabbis say that there is a must multiplicity of gods, but the two primary gods, uh, one is the God above, and one is the God below. And they're both feminine and masculine aspects of the God Leviathan. Well, who is the... I mean, think about this. Jewish rabbis actually teaching in their synagogue, we worship the God Leviathan. And he has both feminine and masculine aspects. Now, that's, that, that would blow your mind right there to find that out. Mm -hmm. But then you, and by the way, I quote these famous rabbis in my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. But you can go to the book of Job in the Old Testament, it tells you about Leviathan. Essentially, he is the great serpent. He's Satan. He is the serpent. So uh, the <laughs> Jews, by the way, actually have a symbol. They call it the Ouroboros, the Jewish Kabbalist. Uh, and the Ouroboros is the great... Uh, serpent, and he's pictured in a, in a cir circle, and he's grasping or biting his own tail. So right. he's like an eternal bee. He's, he's well known among Jewish rabbis mm -hmm. who are deep into the Kabbalah. And remember, the Kabbalah is very, very uh, popular now. You know, everybody from Madonna, you know, the entertainer, <laughs> to Demi Moore, the uh, actress. Uh, I mean, even, even Bill Clinton, one of the ways you can tell that they're really into the Kabbalah is if they wear the little red uh, wristband. You're because kidding. they're big into colors and new numbers and all of that. You're kidding. Uh, and by the way, the Jewish Star of David, as they call it, which is even the rabbis say it's really not the Star of David. The Star of David, where does that symbol come from? It's never 
written explicitly in the Bible itself. Is it in the Talmud? Perhaps. Is there a passage in the Bible about that or no? No. Okay. So you're not really sure exactly where that comes from? No. You got me. Is it nobody knows <laughs> yeah, that? I don't, know. I don't know. I'm not, yeah. Because I know it's called the Star of David. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with David? No, I don't think so. There must be somewhere, I'm, uh, I uh, do not remember exactly what the association was. Okay. I believe that what they call the Star of David is actually the Star of Remphan. Because when you study the Bible, you'll see that when they worshiped other gods, the Bible talks about them carrying the banner of the star of their god, Remphan. Uh, some people, you know, in the occult world, they worship the, that six-pointed star. They call it the hexagram, which is, say, uh, yes, that is our hexagram. The same, the same, very same symbol. Uh, and they use it to place hexes and curses on people. Here's the next one. This is a hexagram, exactly as it sounds. This symbol is used in black magic. It comes from the Jewish Kabbalah, Jewish magic. It is a symbol of dark summoning. What I mean by that is that if you want to put a hex on somebody, you want to cause a spirit to come forth, this is a symbol that's used. It's called a hexagram. Now, it is not, never has been, never will be the star of David. Show me in scripture anywhere where David was instructed to come up with a symbol of a star representing him or the city or the, the country of Israel. It's not there. The other thing is that Solomon was a wise king, but he was also a dabbler. Why do I say that? Because Solomon had many wives. And those wives came from different cultures. And those different cultures worshiped different gods. And guess what they brought to the marriage with them? Witchcraft. They brought those gods with them. Why do I say that? I don't. God does. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. Starting with verse 1. But when King Solomon loved many strange women... Why were they strange? Because they didn't worship the same God. They didn't worship the God of Israel. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, which is also called Astaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination, there's that word, of the Ammonites, and Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because the heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Now go to the book of Amos, chapter 5. God's getting ready to reveal something here. Chapter 5, and we're going to start with verse 25. God is not in a good mood here. The people of Israel, the children of Israel, have been very foolish, and he's correcting them like a good daddy does. And he says, in verse 24, But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? Verse 26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Cheon, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. 
When Solomon had the temple built, he used people from a land called Tyre. Tyre worshipped a god called Baal. This is the symbol of Baal, not the stars of David. This is the seal of Solomon. It comes from the Jewish Kabbalah. And in that time, that's Jewish magic. You see, not all Jews worship the same God. Does that mean that the people of Israel, because they've taken that symbol for their, their, the symbol of their country, does that mean that they're evil? No. They're deceived. It's very subtle. And Satan, how many, we all know that Satan can deceive people very, very well. The Jews say it represents Israel. The witches say it represents our religious system. And we use it to place hexes, curses on people. That sort of gives you an idea of what the six-pointed star is. Now, if you look at the six-pointed star, you'll notice something interesting. You'll notice, uh, Russell, and this is a shocking thing when people hear it the first time. You'll notice that there are six uh, triangles, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, external triangles. That's right. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are also, let me see, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll have to go from memory here. Uh, there's also uh, six points. So you have six points, six triangles, and then inside, uh, the symbol inside has six sides to it. Yeah, it looks like the Pentagon. Yeah, exactly, the Pentagon. Yeah. So you have six sides there, you have six triangles, and six uh, outer uh, points to the star. That comes to six, six, six. Now, you, you might say, well, Tex, that must just be coincidental. 666, that's the number of the beast. Well, now wait, now that's the New Testament. The mm -hmm. New Testament reveals that the number of the beast uh, who comes up out of the earth, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the man of perdition, who brings all hell on earth when he comes, you might say as head of the New World Order, that man, that evil being, that I think even the secular world knows about, they know about the number 666. Mm -hmm. But is there a connection to the Jews to that number? Or is this just a coincidence? Well, it's quite interesting. I was, I've read a lot about this, and many of the rabbis quote, in their ancient literature, they quote a rabbi, for example, named Moses Haysud, H-A-Y-S-O-O-D. Uh, and Rabbi Haysud says of the number 666, remember the, the Jewish Kabbalists give great stock to numbers. But he says, and I quote him in my book, this uh, well-known, very historic rabbi, he says that the number 666 in, in the religion of Judaism, quote, and this is a quote, contains lofty messianic potential. In other words, the potential of being mess messianic, our messiah. He will have that number, in other words. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's sort of incredible. And by the way, I think that shows the power of God, because God said this number 666 will be the number of the beast, and it'll be the number of a man. 